it is just a huge honor to be sitting here with two of my role models, idols, and legends in dentistry. We'll start with the ladies first. Ingrid R. Cast Castellanos. Castellanos. Costa what? Castell the double A is, is like Y. Castellanos. And the only D I ever got in my life was in high school Spanish. And my <laughs> teacher was San Martin. And he told my mother I was linguistically retarded. True, true story. And um, Ingrid is a, um, um, she received her certificate. Uh, what do you say it in Spanish? What's, what's a DDS in Spanish? Cirujano Dentista. I was going to say it. I could have said it just like that, but I let Ingrid do it for me. She got that in 1983 and especially in orthodontics in 89, both from Universidad Nacio Matoma de Mexico, Faculty de Ontologia Mexico City. Did I butcher that at all? Yes. <laughs> Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, una facultad de odontología. And she has lectured internationally and holds memberships in the International Association of Dental Research, Academia Mexican de Odontia, Mexican Academy of Orthodontists, and the American Association of Orthodontists. In addition to being the fellow of the World Federation of Orthodontists, uh, she is currently in charge of coordinating product evaluations. And then my uh, other idol mentor role model, Michael B. Miller, DDS, FACGD, FAACD, he received his DDS from the University of Maryland Dental School. That was the first dental school in the United States. Were you in the first class? Almost. Al almost. almost. He graduated in 1974. When did that school start? It was 18. Uh, it started in 71. No, I'm only kidding. No, it's, uh, it used to be called Baltimore College of Dental Surgery. Uh, I don't know, sometime back in the 1800s. Yeah. I think, first, first I think school. Doc Holliday went to... He was from BCDS. Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, he completed a general practice residency at the Veterans Administration Hospital in Houston in 1975. He authored a three year series of articles on bonding in the Journal of the Houston District Dental Society and has lectured internationally. Dr. Miller is a fellow of the Academy of General Dentistry, a founding and accredited member of the um, AACD, and has memberships in the International Association of Dental Research, American Association of Dental Research, and the Academy of General Materials. He has contributed to several texts and is a co-founder president of Reality. Dr. Miller maintains a private practice in Houston, Texas, and is clinical associate professor at the University of Texas School of Dentistry. But I want to give you my own, um, your own biography for me. So here's what it looked like. <clears throat> so I got out of school in 87, and crowns were made of gold, and the new thing was this porcelain fused metal crown, which was all the new rage. And they started um, going from amalgam fillings, which last 38 years, and they decided to invent the aesthetic health compromise and make these really shitty plastic fillings that lasted five years. That was their best idea. And they kind of started coming out with all these composites. They weren't taught to you in dental school. You didn't know one case from the other. And back in the day, that beginning birth of that cosmetic revolution, it was led by you, Bob Stanley of, um, Robert Ganley of Ivaclair, um, LVI. And so I lived through that whole cosmetic revolution from probably 87. And, and I, you just got religion on because you would explain to every patient, okay, the silver filling, um, this filling will be destroyed by bacteria. And the silver one is half mercury. They don't put that in any multivitamins. And the other half is silver. Think silver, diamine, fluoride, tin, think stainless fluoride. It's all antibacterial stuff. And no matter how you explained it, every American say, I want the white one. So they would buy this downgraded amalgam and you were the guy telling us which ones to buy. And I want to tell you what you specifically did to me. Um, when I went down to your office in Houston, I don't know if you remember when I was down there, I might've had hair and you don't remember me. Um, you know, we're all getting, getting up there, Howard. <laughs> I went down there and you know what the most profound thing you did to me first changed my whole world is, um, I wasn't timing, um, any of these deals. I, and, and you sat me down with extracted teeth and I did it like I did it and there was no bond. And then I did it following the instructions with a timer, just a little thing of timer. And then I do a timer thing. God, I have to do this forever really for 40 days and 40 nights. And it was only like 15 seconds or something like yes. that. And then you would do the uh, bond strength on it and, and it like doubled. I mean, you, you, you saved thousands of fillings uh, for me, but I want to think, and then you had a uh, reality 
uh, magazine, which was as big as the Yellow Pages, and um, and now you um, you um, on your website. I just want to um, just go over some of these guys. I mean, it's it's like um, it, it's like a who's who of dentistry. I mean, I can't say her name. Akatenor Pathiosa Greek Food Hero. Did I get it right? <laughs> What's her name? It's Greek, obviously. Aki. She's one of our new ones from yeah, she's Turkey. New. Yeah. Oh, she's Turkey. Turkey. That's not Greek. Okay, yeah, my she's bad. Turkey. Alan um, Bogosian. Uh, I mean, Faye Goldstap. Uh, my gosh. Um, Levu Steer. He's from Germany, right? Levu Steer is, um, is Germany and the UK. And um, Stephen Poss. Um, I, I mean, my gosh, it's just so many people. Um, David Hornbrook, who um, did all the fillings in my mouth. I could have gone to anybody in the world. I chose that guy. Um, George Friedman and Toronto, Canada. I mean, uh, it's just like a huge, huge but I, I was so excited. I um, When I started this show uh, 1,250 episodes ago, you were the first guy I asked on the show, and it only took you four years, but you finally made it on you the know, show. You know, we're finally here, Howard. So, well, thank you for that. So, You're tell welcome. Us, tell us about your journey. How did you go from dentist to reality, dental materials, guru, um, how, how did that journey take place? So the, the, the cliff notes version, I'll give you the cliff notes version is that back in the early eighties, uh, I was just a young practicing dentist, got out of, got out of my residency in 76 and just had a regular family practice in Houston. Um, and but I always, in the back of my mind, I always said to myself, do I really know what I'm doing? How many dentists do you think ask them, ask that question to themselves? I'm sure you have too. I mean, when you sit down with a patient and you're doing something, do you really know that you're doing it the right way? Especially if you went through dental school, which we all did, and we learned the wrong way. So... So I'm, I'm going through all these questions in my mind. And so I got with another dentist in Houston. This is back in the early 80s. And I said, we got to do something about this. And so we, we met for a few years on and off. Uh, and then we finally published our first product evaluation book uh, in 86, 1986. And... Since that time, um, we've opened up. Uh, so for a while, let me go back. So for a while, we used external research sources. And I was never really, really uh, that keen on depending on other people's data. Because in the scientific world, data is, is, is collected in ways that we as practicing dentists don't understand. I mean, the scientific world does things way differently than we as real dentists, I call, I call us real dentists, how we do it. So, uh, so we opened up our own research lab in Houston in 98. And since that time, so that's about 20 years ago, since that time we have literally revolutionized the way that dental materials are tested for practicing dentists. And we've had a lot of help along the way. We've had some, some help from university folks. We've had a lot of help from private practice dentists and the, some of the dentists that you just mentioned um, were instrumental. Um, George Friedman, David Hornbrook, Eddie Lynch in the UK. Um, these types- All been of, on the show before you. Yeah. So these, these types of people, I mean, they're, they're big parts of what we do. And uh, so I believe that we are the only product evaluation service out there that not only doesn't charge for evaluations, um, which keeps us totally independent. So there isn't any charge for a manufacturer to send us products. And uh, we send it out to, to the evaluators. We take apart the products in our lab. 
We test not only whether the products are worthwhile to use in a general practice, but we also test, as you, as you just alluded to, we tested to the way that, you, that a dentist should be using the product. Because manufacturers, they're, you know, they're, they're very good at what they do, but they don't always give us in the directions the best way to use their products. You would think they would, but they don't. And we've, over the years, we have found many products. Uh, we have found ways of using products, using manufacturers' products that actually work better than what the manufacturer tells you in the directions, if you can even read the directions. And a number of manufacturers have adopted our verbiage because we have a certain way of of, of giving advice to our, to our members, to our reality members. And, uh, and now my students, I've been at the, at the dental school in Houston now for a little over five years. And um, my task there is to try to teach students the absolute correct way to use the limited number of materials that the schools can, can actually buy and, and, uh, and calibrate the students the way that they should be using these once they get out into practice. Well, so, I, all I want to know on the cliff notes is where you found Ingrid. You, you left Ingrid out of the story. So Ingrid came along. Uh, we were, we we started the company in '86, and Ingrid came along in '89. January '89. Yeah, and it was just by serendipity. Uh, Ingrid was uh, had moved from Mexico to Houston. And she actually came into my dental practice um, to, uh, as a, as a temp to help me out. And lo and behold, um, uh, we, uh, we, we found out that there was quite a bit of synergism, not only- Was it the bonding agent? Was that your clone? The bonding oh, agent, yes. you know, we the, bonded. The like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we bonded. Uh, well, so, I, I'm not going to say any more about how we bonded. Do you have any of these bonding photos? Are they in the textbook? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. I thought it was interesting. But like you said, the technology was new. So I was observing him doing stuff, and I have a lot of questions because, you know, when I went to dental school, we got, like you said, concise. That's it. We didn't have that. So I was very interested in the new technology and the history and all that. So when I used to assist him sometimes, I, I ask a lot of questions. So he started question, well, what is your deal? What is what? What is your deal? Because he didn't yeah. know. I, was I didn't know she was a dentist. Oh, yeah. Well, back then, women dentists weren't very common. They were not. They were not. I'm, yes. I'm telling you guys, it just is what it is. I mean, a lot of people don't like what their grandparents did or what they did a century ago or two centuries ago or three centuries ago, but it used to be a man's profession back then. I mean, it, it would have been, it, I, I don't think I ever saw a woman dentist growing up in Wichita, Kansas. But, but I, I want to go back to, um, um, first of all, um, a lot of the young kids think I'm crazy, bad-mouthing composites, and a lot of older dentists actually believe that their composite and their magic hands last longer than amalgams. You're a research junkie. You quote dental research like these reverends quote the Bible. Um, was it an aesthetic health compromise? Did amalgams last longer than composites or not? So the research, unfortunately, the research is few and far between on real clinical research when the restorations are done properly. And that is a big, you know, like in our practice, I mean, I started to do, for instance, posterior composites. And I was invited to speak to the Academy of Operative Dentistry back in the mid 80s on posterior composites because it was a very conservative group and nobody believed me that you can actually use composites in posterior teeth as a substitute for amalgam. So okay, to put that in perspective, when I graduated in 87, before we could leave, we had to sign an ethics statement that said, using posterior composites was unethical and in the violation of the American dentalist, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. So, so that, that, you know, that's wrong. It was, it was wrong back then. 
And it's, it's been wrong because the fact is, is that I have patients that I started doing posterior composites back in about 82, 83 circa. Um, and, uh, it, it, even before I started reality, I said, you know, this type of material, especially when the light cured, the visible light cured materials came out. I actually was the first dentist in Texas that had to, to have gotten one of the very original Prisma lights from what was then known as the LD Caulk Company. Okay. And, and it just seemed to me that there was, there were ways of restoring these teeth conservatively. And I used, uh, and I, I still say it in my lectures, the patient owns the enamel. We own the schmutz. The patient owns the enamel. And this whole minimally invasive trend, which, you know, I say trend. I mean, it's, it's supposed to be new, but it's exactly what I lectured to the Academy of Operative Dentistry about in the 80s about doing all these tunnel preps and leaving oblique ridges and doing slot preparations and leaving enamel when you could leave enamel. And in the early 90s, I, re I wrote a two-part two series of articles for uh, a journal that's not around anymore, but it was called Rest in Peace, GV Black. And basically, I went down Black's principles, and I debunked all Black's principles when it came to contemporary adhesive dentistry. Because, I mean, what is a self-cleansing area? Black had self-cleansing area. There is no self-cleansing area of a tooth. Why would you extend a preparation for prevention? That's BS. There is no such thing as extending a preparation for prevention. So, so the, the whole idea in doing posterior composites, even with the early generation of composites, was number one, isolation. Nobody likes to use dental dams. You notice we don't call them rubber dams anymore because we don't use latex. <laughs> Seriously, big, they quit calling them rubber dams? Yeah, it's all dental dam now. Because there's no rubber? In, there's no rubber in it. So no they call them dental dams? Dental dams. Because they're made of latex? Because they're non-latex. You know what I did to make myself work under a rubber dam 100% of the time? You know what I did back in 87? I actually tacked a rubber dam on the ceiling above me. So I could always say I always practice under a rubber dam. <laughs> I love that. That's a good one. So, um, so they're not rubber I dams. I can see you doing that. They're, they're dental yeah. dams. So, so right from the start, I, I, I said, I mean, I was just like everyone else. I hated dams when I was in school because of the way they made you put them on. We developed a much simpler way of putting on dams, much more expeditious way. And in our technique book, we, we have a technique book. And in our technique book, we actually have a step-by-step -step procedure of how to put on a dam quickly. And, and I mean, you have to wait for anesthesia anyway. <laughs> but where, but where, anyway, so where, the, wait, um, you said that technique. So if they go to realityratings.com, where is that? So it's under other links on the right side of the homepage. And it's if under you other links, so if you scroll down, you'll see first is our, our monthly newsletter reality now. And I believe right under that you'll find the techniques. Okay. So I see product categories by renew membership, my favorites, recent ratings, most recent Fort look. It's on the right side. Did you read, uh, did you log in? Did I log? Oh, I have to log in. You have to log in. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, so that, that's the first time. It's it's so funny. We have five programmers, and I can't believe how many times they'll show me something. I'll say, well, when did you put that up there? And they go, we did that a year ago. I've been on your site a dozen times. I never even knew there was a place to log in and register. But anyway, if I logged in. So if you logged in, there's a there's a right column. A so, column so, uh, right. So, so I need to register then. So you need to register. Uh, uh, Ingrid's in charge of the whole membership uh uh, field. Um, okay. So, so just, so the, the first question millennials are going to ask is why do you need to register? What, what, why? When you register, you have an access to everything. You can see all the products we have. 
on their evaluations product that we evaluate, and you can see a little preview on it. Okay. So on how to use it, you can do a side-by-side -side comparison. You're trying to decide between a bonding agent, like a self-etcher, you can compare maybe three products you're interested or four, and you can see which one will fit better your practice. Okay. Bob, can you explain the membership category though? Uh, well, we have the basic membership. So when you register and you're able to see like a preview of all the products, and then the next level is a premium membership. As a premium member, you're able to read all the evaluations. Also, you can make comments on the products, or you have a question, you can post the questions. And you okay, can post your own products too. Right. It's a product we don't have and you will like and you really like it. You can post the product. And then we, if you somebody else like it, they can make a comment. And okay, then but explain, explain to my homies, why should they, um, why should they go to realityratings.com and be a member? All the information you get about the products. About all the all, dental products all, they all use. All the products, because you know, there's so many new products coming at the market, and then you have your rep come in and tell you, well, of course he's gonna say it. the product is great. You know, I'll never forget this. When I was in dental school, I actually, I don't, I don't know if I'll get in legal trouble saying this, but I worked for Merle Lynch and I won the Missouri-wide um, deal of selling um, uh, IRAs. And I only worked there because my wife worked there. We were married senior. And um, it was amazing. So my, my whole spin was I'd get the newspaper and I'd look for everybody selling something expensive, like a boat, a yacht, a Mercedes-Benz. And I'd call them up and I'd ask them about the boat. And they're like, ah, and they're like, well, are you in the market to buy it? In the market to buy it? Are you out of your freaking mind? I'm a poor, starving dental student. I won't even have a job for another year. I'm just uh, down here working at um, Merle Lynch trying to sell IRAs. That was my opening, and it really, really worked. But it was amazing how back then I sat there and watched it when a stock was just turned out to be trash. The brokers got like double or triple commission to get rid of it. So what are they doing? They're, they're calling their clients. And um, so I always wonder, you know, when that rep is telling you, you should buy products ABC, is there a chance she might get a commission on that more than if she sold another product? You're, you're asking me? Yeah, they're, they're millennials. They're, they're green. Yes. They're, they're green. I mean, I, I'll ask it another way. When you go to a seminar, like I notice, whenever you go to these big meetings, they always complain about how the attendance has been going down for years and years and years. And then I show them their speakers and I say, why does the nonprofits have the same speakers, but out in the private sector, where guys are making, you know, 10,000 bucks a life, how come you don't have any of them? Is there a correlation between if I'm gonna buy a big booth at your convention, you're gonna have my speaker talking about my product? And when the supply rep comes in, she might be incentivized to sell this product over that product. I mean, is, is there anything nefarious going so, on? So, no. So There's he, nothing he, nefarious going on. There is there's nothing nefarious going on or nefarious, you know. Uh, the, I'm from Kansas. You make up words. <laughs> so here's, here's the real deal. Like, I'll give you an example. We just posted the one of our newest products was a new bleaching system from Beyond International, called Polis Advanced Ultra. It's the only bleaching system with ultrasonic technology to, uh, to try to force the 35% hydrogen peroxide into teeth to make them whiter, okay? So it's a power bleaching system. You have to buy their unit. Now, would you have to find that behind the wall? Would you have to be registered first? Uh, well, you can, you, so here's the deal. Uh, if you're a premium member, a premium member, uh, you either buy it for a year, which is $99, or you can buy it monthly for $9.99, or you can buy it daily for 99 cents. So, so you can buy it for one day for just a buck? 99, uh, 99 cents. Huh. If you just want to come in, say you want to check out one product, but you don't really want to, get a whole membership. You don't want to go on. You don't want to go into the almost 1300 products that we have on our site. You're not really interested in all that. Maybe you just went to a lecture and somebody mentioned this hot new product. So maybe you just want to check that out. That's the only thing you want to do. 
99 cents. Well, 99 cents will get you one day of total access to the entire site. So, but the point is, is that uh, I just read an evaluation from another dentist on this Polis Advanced Ultra. And everything was peachy cream. It was wonderful. You know, go out and buy this system. Now, I'm not saying it's not a good system. I mean, it actually is a pretty nice system, but it's not, it's, it's not what they, you know, what you see in all the ads. So we have no, we, uh, we know the people in beyond cause they're, they're actually based in Houston. Um, and they've asked us for advice. Uh, we really don't give manufacturers advice, but we do evaluate their products and we tell the truth about products. We tell dentists what it can do and what it can't do. And that's pretty rare today because most of the other product evaluation services out there, you know, they're, they're, um, uh, they're, they may have a vested interest and we don't. We have no vested interest in any company. So, but, but back, back to the lectures. Um, if, if she just walked out of dental kindergarten school um, two months ago, if she went to a hundred lectures at her local state meeting, what percent of the lectures do you think are paid commercials incentivized by the speakers have a side gig speaking for a company saying these products are the greatest when it's really their job? And does, does that not happen or does that happen? 99% of lectures today on the circuit are paid lectures. Did you hear what he just said? We don't make this shit up. They should be wearing a NASCAR suit with all the shit they're telling you. And you're just like, oh, he's so nice. He's, he's a real dentist and he came and lectured to her. No, he didn't. And, and what do you think their average honorarium is from the company? So it, it well, it, it would vary, but I would, I would venture to guess that if somebody is out lecturing for XYZ company and they're doing a lecture for, at the Chicago midwinter, for instance, they may get paid $10,000 to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and $10,000 and you guys think he's Gandhi and you think he's just, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and when they use companies go rent the booth, they say, well, we'll rent this area, but we want three speakers. And then when you sit there and say, um, well, here's a guy who's really sought after free enterprise, free market. Oh no, he's not, he doesn't have any company of sponsorship. It's like, I'm paying you a thousand dollars a year in dues. And I have to listen to a commercial because the speaker didn't come with, well, what, what are my dues buying? Yeah. I give you a thousand freaking bucks and I have to listen to a NASCAR guy who I wish would drive into a wall and he's not going to wear his, all of his disclosures. And then these kids are like, well, did you hear what, what Dr. Sacred Golden Cow said? And it's like, I mean, am, am I a cynical bastard or is this, is this no, reality? So I'll give you one more example. I was speaking uh, at the Rocky mountain meeting in Denver several years ago. And Several years ago, you waited till they legalized marijuana. Then you went and spoke for free. <laughs> you got that. <laughs> when, you, when you're lecturing, you know, it's, uh, you know. So, so I mentioned a specific type of brand new impression material. And the company marketing this impression material, unbeknownst to me, was sponsoring, was partly sponsoring my lecture. Now, when I say partly sponsoring my lecture, my contracts are always with like the dental association. I don't know who sponsors what. Okay. So I was up there doing my normal lecture and I showed a picture of this brand new impression material that is supposedly has unbelievable tear strength, never tears. Okay. And I showed a picture of an impression that I had taken. Uh, not too long before I lectured and in all the, in, in all the patients and braziers, the impression material was left there. So it tore. Okay. Well, when I was finished with the lecture, 
the rep of this company came up to me and said, I can't believe you killed us like this. Yeah. We're sponsoring your lecture. Yeah. And I go, well, first of all, I didn't know you were sponsoring my lecture. That's the first thing. The second thing is that why don't you tell the truth about your products? So rather than get on my back, go back to the people who develop your products and tell them, I just saw a lecture that shows it doesn't work the way that we're saying it's working. So go back and figure it out. You should be patting me on the back. So this is endemic today. And you said it was 99%. I believe it's 99%. Well, who's the one guy speaking the truth? I mean, me. we're, we're, we're you. Me. Um, yeah, I, 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 and they also do things like, um, they, they do it to me all the time and say, well, we, we don't want to pay the other half your honor rain because Mrs. Wimpleton was offended. Well, you know what I want to say? I yes. mean, I mean, I call my show dentistry uncensored. If you want someone to tell you what you want to hear, well, don't go listen to me. Don't go listen to you. I remember one time I was listening to you lecture and, uh, um, it was a, uh, a girl, uh, that I love Shelly Kanda. Mm -hmm. She goes, God, I love salty ass he'll just that's why she called you salty ass she goes i love his salty ass he, he shelly's great shelly is great say the truth and the bottom line is what i and she's understand. a great dentist yeah she's a phenomenal yeah. dentist and she was on the show two years ago where and she told me she's gonna get you on the show two years ago she must not have much clout um <laughs> but the bottom the bottom line was um i mean you're a member of the american dental association you pay these guys a thousand freaking dollars and who do they have speak? Oh, someone that's sponsored. Okay, well, if they're sponsored, make them wear a NASCAR suit. Make them with there and say, this was brought to you by Targus Vectris, Dicor, which you can cement with Duralon, um, Art Glass. Can you can you remind the viewers any of those stories? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that there's, I mean, I mean, there are talk, many. Because these, these are kids. They're, they're the, there are 30. many, uh, many disasters. Um, one What's big the biggest one, one that comes to your mind? Uh, probably advance cement. So advance was it advanced? Uh, don't tell me. Don't tell me. It wasn't advanced. So, so advanced cement came out, and it it was kind of a a, a uh, an advanced type of ionomer. Okay, yeah. and they said that you could use it for cementing crowns, for cementing posts, and all this sort of thing. The one thing that and it was a dense ply product. Uh, the one thing the dense ply did not do, it did, it did not test its expansion under intraoral conditions. So what happened is that many people, many clinicians, including Us. Ingrid and me, and including Alan Bogosian, who is on our editorial team, had not only crowns fracture, from the expansion of this cement, but teeth were fracturing when posts were cemented with this cement. So we went back to Dentsply and we said, you gotta take this stuff off the market. This is bad news. We publicized it. We were the only ones who publicized it. We put the picture, I put pictures in my lectures and they, they took it back. They looked at it and they said, you're right. We goofed. At least they admitted they, that they goofed. And so there's another disaster. You want to hear another disaster? Is our glass? Is our glass? No, not our glass. So target factors? No. So the uh, Icor? No, this one has to do with I bond. I bond. Okay. So when I bond first came out, um, it was hailed as this amazing new bonding agent made in Germany. And Ingrid and I knew the fellow who actually developed it in conjunction with Horaeus Kolzer. Okay. So we get it into our lab. Out of Indiana, your North American division. Well, now Horace they're Kohl's. in Indiana. Yeah, but at that yeah. time they manufacture in Germany. Well, okay. it, well, it was, it was, well, no, they're, they're still based in Germany. Yeah. Just the, so all the products are still made in Germany, most of the products. Okay. So this, so I bond comes in, we get it into our lab in Houston in June. Okay. 
And we sit down at our lab bench and we test it just the way we test thousands of other adhesives. And we found that it had zero bond strength, zero. <laughs> Not, I mean, you, we couldn't even get it to the Instron. So we called Kulzer, uh, back then it was Horaeus Kulzer, and we said, this stuff doesn't work, you gotta take it off the market. So they go, impossible. So they got the inventor of I-Bond, who was a German professor. They flew him to Houston, like two weeks later. He sits down at our lab bench and he said, you have to be doing something wrong. And we said, well, okay, show us what we're doing wrong. Because we don't publish anything unless we are 150% sure that we're right. So, uh, so he sits down at a lab bench, he takes it out, he, he bonds with it, and same thing, total failure. So he opens the bottle up, and what happened was, is that Horaeus did not do um, uh, high temperature testing of this product. So this is Houston, Texas in June. It's hot, it's humid, these bottles are being stored in hot warehouses, the only thing that was left in the bottle was a solvent. <laughs> None of the monomers and the adhesive monomers were, they were all pre-polymerized at the bottom of the bottle. Well, the inventor of, of the material, he was livid. He called them up, he said, you know, you're ruining my invention, blah, blah, blah. And so they took it off the market they they reformulated and everything and we just tested their brand new ibon universal and let me tell you something that is a great product so colzer learned their lesson and this is one of the things that we would hope that a lot of manufacturers now some manufacturers don't like us and then they don't send us products anymore uh, one example of that is coltine whale dent they decided that they didn't like what we said about their products, so they stopped sending us products. And they have some pretty good products. And so how we, did you how did you fight back with them? We just announced it to our membership that we can no longer uh, recommend any Coltine Weldon. Or uh, do they still call yeah, Coltine Weldon? Yeah. So uh, we can no longer recommend any more Coltine Weldon products because we can't validate their efficacy anymore. So if you buy a Coltine Weldon product, uh, you're buying it at your own risk. So um, we just watched um, Danaher. So, so you and I lived through, um, it used to be Siemens. They owned Serona mm -hmm. and the uh, best idea of the CEO of Siemens that they were overweighted in healthcare and underweighted in, you know, soap and shampoo. So they spun off um, um, they spun off their uh, Serona mm -hmm. and it did great. And we just had another company uh, spun off. Um, Danaher decides that they don't want uh, their dental division. So they just spun it off this week uh, under Invista and they raised $589 million. So my first gut instinct is, would you want to have parents that didn't love you? I mean, I wouldn't want to be held by Danaher if they're like, we're not in the dental business. I mean, it was really good for Serona. Do you, do you think um, Invista, do you, do you think getting away from Danaher that the company may be healthier? Or do you think that's a, because you've seen the rodeo with Serona and now they grew up and got married to Densefly and are so, treated as X-Ray. Right. So, so I'm very familiar with Invista and this, you know, the, the, uh, the breakup between or, or the, uh, the spinoff, if you will. Did their parents not love them? So Danaher, <laughs> you know, um, uh, Cybron Dental Specialties, if you remember, used to be the parent company of Kerr. And um, and back then, Kerr was, did amazing things. Kerr was one of the absolute most amazing dental companies. Optibond as an adhesive was a groundbreaking material back in the early 90s. Herculite was a groundbreaking composite in the mid 80s. And so, so they had some 
really smart people working for them in their dental, re, uh, dental materials uh, center. And they had good people running the company. Um, and, and when Danaher took it over, um, they, they lost their way. I mean, there's no other way of saying it. And, uh, our Germany's Cavo. Well, they, they, uh, Cavo, um, <laughs> so back in the day, Cavo was owned by the Kettenbach company, uh, not Kettenbach, but the, uh, Kaltenbach company, uh, Kaltenbach family. And we knew the people from the original family who owned Cavo. We toured their facilities in Germany. They had like three or four facilities, Ingrid and I. Yeah, the hand pieces and and the units and and I mean they had exquisite stuff. Um and and I have to tell you, I mean, lately the Cavo stuff has not been as good as it used to be. You think? Yeah, I think. You think? I think. They did yes. this with Singer Sewing Machine too yes. back in the day yes. where it had the best brand because it was the best quality. Then Free Enterprise gets it and they start, you know, replacing all the metal parts with plastic parts and they milk that cow to where now, even though um, I'm Irish, I'm embarrassed to, to own a Singer sewing machine. So this is... It's, uh, you know, Cavo, uh, unfortunately, is a shadow of itself. Now now that they're spinning it off and they're going to be part of Invista, um, you know, I know the people who are running the company. Um, well, don't you know, start there. Do you think, do you think, oh, do you oh. think who's the guy running the company? You know his name. Well, the, uh, let's see, I just met this guy, uh, about a month ago. Um, I'm trying to remember, <laughs> uh, oh geez, you, you got me on that one. I, I, I did meet him. Um, if you said his name, I would be, uh, I, I would know. I'm not saying his name, a chicken shit. Uh, didn't want to come on my show. Oh, oh, is that right? Well, yeah, I said, uh, yeah. So why he said, well, I, I, I don't, I don't think I can. Yeah, you're, you're the president of the company. You can't come on my show. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, how how embarrassing is that? Um, but yeah, uh, you should uh, send Amir Ogde Amir 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 right, Ogde Amir. an email yes. and say, come on, dude, you you just you got kicked out of the Danaher home. Um, you have some of the biggest brand names in all of dentistry. I yep. mean, my God, I yep. mean, it's just a powerhouse of these, uh, these, these companies. Uh, and, um, so what, what are you going to do? Are, are you just going to milk the cow till it just drops dead or, or is it, I mean, what, what, what is your vision? I mean, what, what do you, what do you think your vision or some company? And I want to ask you this, this is, I'm, I'm going to try to get you in trouble with everyone. When you take a company, I'm already in trouble with everyone. <laughs> you know, they um, like Ingrid. You know, they like they, you, Ingrid's they like a whole you. lot nicer than I am. Uh, you know, so. But, but it, take a company j just on merits. I mean, I know generalizations are bad, unless it's about Irish people, and it's true. We're all drunks, and um, but like Ivan Clare is privately held; it's owned by a family. Uh, and Vistas, you know, they're they're a public company. They they got their numbers made. D does a company like uh, a private company like Ivan Clare can they? have a longer span view or are they subject to the same shenanigans as a publicly traded company? You know, uh, it's either Ivaclar or Evaclar, depending on what side of the Atlantic you're on. Okay? Evilclar? So we call it Evaclar. Evil um, evil? Yeah, no, they're not evil. No, I'm not going to, I'm not oh, going to okay, go. Okay, I'm way. trying to follow Joe. Ivaclar or Evaclar? Bob Ganley, who I believe just retired, right? right? Right. So he's an old buddy of ours, George right. Tosowski, who I'm sure right. you, you know George. Yeah. So George is a thirty-year lifelong buddy. Yeah, these are these are old buddies, good guys, and and uh, dedicated individuals. Um, look, every company has has a vested interest in their products, and um, I think um, uh, Eva Clark came on to the zirconia. Band oh, wagon you're saying a Evo Clar, like hygienists or hygienists, like in the West, they say barbiturates. Yeah, I wasn't saying just... evil. Oh, that's no, right. no, no. Yeah, this so, isn't like so doctor international evil. viewers, like in America. You know, in the East Coast, it's barbiturates. Out West, it's barbiturates. It's, yeah. Uh, in the East Coast, it's hygienist. Out here, it's hygienist. So you were you were pronouncing Ivo Clar versus Evo Clar. Well, here in the states, we most people call it Ivo Clar, but if you're in Europe. 
It's Evaclar. And they call it Adidas shoes here. And in Germany, you know what Adidas is? It's Adi Das. His name was Adolf Das, but after World War II, the Adolf name, uh, Adolf Coors here in Colorado said, maybe we should not sell Adolf Coors beer, and they dropped the Adolf. So Adidas um, was Adolf uh, Das. They dropped Adolf and went to his nickname was Adi, Adi Das. But over here, everybody says it's Adidas, and it stands for all day long, I dream about soccer. Um, but uh, so, so over there in Europe, they pronounce it Porsche, and how do they pronounce Ivoclar? Eva Clar. Eva Clar. Yes, Eva Clar. You think they could pronounce it right since they're from over there? You would think, um, but um, I tell you, they have the world's greatest factory yeah, I've been environment. There. You've yeah, seen the, oh, the, yeah. the Alps and, and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, can I make one comment about yeah, that? So, you know, I've lectured in fifty countries, and my boys always get mad when I say fifty. They say, "Dad, you've been saying fifty for." and I was in grammar school. So I don't know how many, but I've been to pretty much so many of them. Yes. And when I go, when I was little, when dad went on vacation, we would go to the greatest theme park, uh, like Six Flags over Texas, and dad liked to watch something made. So I saw every factory from Coors to Bud. To, when we went to buy a station wagon, we drove to Detroit, got on a golf cart, and they pulled us alongside our station wagon. And we got to see the whole, you know, just, it's all stuff. So my boys have been in, if you make something and you sell it in dentistry, we, we've been there. And when you go into a German manufacturing place out of Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Germany, they don't have a marketing department. They have a PhD department and their motto is you will just build it so damn good it'll sell itself. And then when you go to these American companies, the lion's share, they don't have a PhD department but you'll go in a sales room and there's 30 guys and a sales leader and they got a thermometer and they're dialing for dollars. And then you go to China, to Asia and they're like, okay, we're gonna make this so cheap that you'll, you'll just buy it because it's so cheap. And I've been saying for 30 years that the Americans need to hire, they need to become more German and hire PhDs and keep an eye on cost. And the Chinese, I mean, when you go into Walmart, name one brand name from China. Well, there are, well, I mean, no uh, one Chinese brand name. name oh, one, one Chinese name. name brand. One Chinese brand name. Well, there aren't any Chinese. There, there aren't any. No. That's why I always tell them in China. I said, you know, quit, they're American brands. Quit making made in China. everything <laughs> so cheap. Start making nicer stuff and build your first brand. They don't have. Uh, I mean, you go to South Korea. They got Hyundai. They got Kia. They got LG. They got all these brands. They don't have brands in China. I'm like, raise your price and make it higher quality. And the Germans, you always know, like, you know, you should get a marketing department. You should tell people about it. So it's like the Germans, they make it so good. But I mean, when you walk into a German, Switzerland, anything in Scandinavia, um, Copenhagen, Denmark, uh, Three Shape, uh, Helsinki, Finland, um, Plan Mecca. When you walk in any of those factories, it's like you're in a Star Wars movie. And then when you come back to America, it's kind of hillbilly. And if you don't believe me, look at a Mercedes Benz and then look at a Chrysler. And if you still have any questions, I, I can't help you. Um, but anyway, um, is there anybody we haven't offended yet on this show? Is there some more? Uh, well, but, 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 but do, you, do you think the Germans, do you, do you think the Germans and Scandinavia um, are more focused on quality than the Americans and the Chinese? Well, the Chinese is a different story. Let's leave the Chinese because I can tell you, you know, categorically that 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 many of the things other than maybe iPhones, you know, um, and of course it's a, it's an American company directing the Chinese. But any Chinese products that come out of China, they leave a lot to be desired. But I would say that here in the states, I mean, Ultradent makes great products. How many PhDs work at Ultradent? Uh, well, N name them. Um, that's a good question. It, well, answer it. He has eleven 1 hundred employees. How many PhDs? I think they have a few. They, they, oh, really? Yes. They, tell me their names. I don't remember. But but let, let, me, let me just say I'll, this. I'll, I'll drive the, I'll drive you there tonight to shake his hand that doesn't exist. Okay, but don't get hung up on PhDs. Let me tell you something. I mean, you're yeah. talking to somebody that's been on the inside of a dental school 
for about five and a half years now. (laughs) And there are many PhDs. These are very bright individuals. But just because you have a PhD does not mean that you know anything about dentistry. But it raises the chance, if, doesn't it? Doesn't no, it raise the no, chance? No, it does not raise really? the chance. It doesn't no, even raise the chance. No. Like, for instance, I'll give you an example. Ultradent created the Velo, okay, the, the curing light. Absolutely the best curing light on the market. They created it based on Dan Fisher's vision and the folks that they have in their engineering department who are not PhDs, they're practical people. They said, okay, what do you need in a curing light? He didn't listen to me right away and he made the original one with a, with a, a, a tip that was a little too small, but then he listened and he came out with the Velo Grand, which has a 12 millimeter tip. Uh, it's, it's made out of this anodized aluminum that you can throw against the wall because- My homies don't know what anodized aluminum means. Well, it's just a hard, it's just a hard aluminum, okay. really hard aluminum, okay. aircraft style aluminum. Okay. And so, so you, can take, you can take a Velo and literally drop it. And dental offices, we drop lights all the time, let's face it. Yeah. I mean, and so, he knew we needed lots of power. Uh, we needed something that was indestructible, that had a big tip. Uh, he sells it for a little too much money. He, that's, uh, he probably should bring it down a little bit. But having said all that, he doesn't have PhDs designing this stuff. They have a lot of practical people uh, working for Dan and Dan Utah's is Utah's a rugged state. I mean, they, they went out there with nothing. He's a rugged guy. He's, He's a, a rugged, rugged and, guy. And I feel sorry for him because the dentists so, are such hypocrites. Cause I always say, well, why, why do you love America? And you don't like, uh, say communist China or Russia freedom of speech. So Dan goes out there and tells his public view of what he thinks of Trump. And it really back. Did you hear about that? And it backlashed on his, his company. Yes. And it's like, dude, you, if, if you, so, so, so you're not for freedom of speech. Oh, everybody's just supposed to suck up to, um, what, what are you, the anointed one? And the anointed one always has the same thing in common. The anointed ones, um, are never tethered to empirical evidence uh, or possibly they could be wrong, but you're either for free speech or you're not. So if you, if you're not going to buy alternate products because he doesn't like Trump, then, then you're not an American. And you're, you're, you're kind of gross. Yeah. I mean, so, I, I mean, you're I, supposed I, to I listen to, remember that, remember that, uh, that movie about, um, the guy that owned Hustler. Yes. Larry he, Flint. Larry Flint. Yes. And the Supreme court did their job. They said, well, we don't like anything in this magazine, but he does have the freedom to print to his magazine. And everybody on the Supreme court said he's a gross guy. And everything in his magazine is gross, but you know what's grosser? To take away his right to free speech. And so when, when you're some redneck, hillbilly, backward ass Texan dentist practicing across the street from him, and you don't like Dan Fisher because he didn't say what you wanted to hear about your, your president, well, you're not even an American. Yeah. And if you do hate Trump, then you should only buy alternate products. <laughs> How much did that hurt his business? You know, I think it, I think it hurt and, and it hurt. I, I mean, I've known Dan for, Ingrid and I have known Dan for 30 some years, as I'm sure you have. And, and I'm not sure, uh, look, Dan owns the company. Dan is very outspoken on other things. Uh, and so I'm, are you. Well, I'm outspoken. I'm not. Ingrid I'm, is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm outspoken on dentistry. You know, mm-hmm. I keep politics out right. of reality. I mean, because right, so do people, we. people don't buy reality. You don't go onto our website because I support this candidate or this cause or something. Because you're Kinda a Marxist, like, right? Well, uh, God. But, but the lesson yeah, learned yeah, here yeah, is yeah. You, you know that's obvious to us, but you know what you do? I mean, I've asked every patient, why did you leave the last dentist? Why did you come here? Religion, sex, politics, and violence. Don't ever talk about it. And you're sitting there saying, Dan shouldn't have said that. I, I had a patient the other, I had a new patient on Monday. Guess why he left the last of us. You're never going to believe this in a million years. 
He sang country music while he worked on her. Oh, jeez. And she <laughs> hates country, country music. And I know the dentist. He can, he's in a band. He can play it, yeah. sing it. Yeah. He's amazing. But I mean, um, so yeah, so no religion, sex, politics, violence, and never country music. But I will say this. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say this. You know, today, um, especially in, in dental schools, for instance, you can barely say anything to anybody about anything. Without you can't opinion. put your hand on someone's shoulder and say, good job. Um, you can't compliment patients because you never know what's, what somebody is going to, what's going to be offensive to you somebody. Can't lay your instruments on their. You, I mean, you, I mean, it's, it's gone way too far. And, you know, I'm known in, in our dental school as the mean guy. Because I tell the students, if they did a great job, I tell them that you did a great job. And if they did a crappy job and they didn't follow my directions, I look at them in the eye and I say, you did a crappy job today. And you didn't follow my directions. And you're treating human beings. This is not game time. This is the real deal. And you need to either take this seriously or you need to apply for a greeter position at Walmart. So I'm about the only faculty member that they, that they allow to say those types of things. <laughs> but the fact is, is that uh, we, uh, the, 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 the younger generation of dentists, especially the students today, their education is so much different than the education that, that we all had. And I'm not sure. Well, when we were in dental school, the Dead Sea was only sick. I know, I know, I know. It's and I'm, and uh, it's uh, in some cases uh, it's kind of scary on the on some of these uh, new graduates getting out there. I'm concerned about it, and I've raised my concern. Um, so, so is uh, dental is dental school education better than in the '80s or worse? How would you uh, compare it to the graduate, the ones who graduated in eighty? So I in would 80s. say in in the basic clinical skills, probably not as good. On maybe some of the uh, some of the the um, skills, the interprofessional skills, you know, communicating with. Uh, I just went through a workshop. Uh, I was a, I was one of the faculty members in charge of a workshop. Um, with a social worker, a pharmacist, and a physical therapist teaching dental students how to communicate with these other professionals. So is that going to make them necessarily a better technical dentist? Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. Um, so I think in some areas, um, we probably still have a long way to go with the current generation of, of young dentists. And you have a, um, a daughter, mm -hmm. 21. Um, if she said, I want to um, go to dental school, what, what would you tell her? Did you say it's a good idea or that's a crazy idea? So we've had this conversation. Uh, our daughter is a senior at Texas A&M. She's a chemical engineering major and she loves it. But she did say to me and to Ingrid one day, she goes, well, daddy, you know, if it was, it was she was kind of joking around, yep. but she goes, you know, if I don't make any chemical engineering, I can always go to dental school. Or if I get bored. <laughs> yeah. And it was kind of like, well, honey, it's not exactly like that. I mean, you need to want to be a dentist. And she's been around Ingrid and me, you know, for all these years, she's worked in our research lab. We have put her to, uh, to, at the lab bench. She has done bonding tests. She did actually an internship for a dental company in Germany for an entire summer, two summers ago. <laughs> so she knows all about that type of stuff. Um, is it a good idea? I still think that there is a lot of opportunity in dentistry, but... You know, I have to say that I think a lot of the corporate dentistry 
is is it's a bad trend. I understand the trend, but I think it's a bad trend. So what why do you, why do you think it's a bad trend? Because the dentists now are just they're just employees. Like they, those big DSOs. Yeah, they go to the DSOs, the the um, Aspens and and the local ones, and they don't get to really make decisions for themselves. Actually, I, I I met with one of our recent graduates not too long ago. She was a she had graduated two years before this. She asked me uh, to meet with her, and she told me that after being and working in corporate for two years that she feels like she doesn't, she's, she was lost. She didn't know what to do because she hated working in corporate. And she was just asking my advice on how she can break out of that stranglehold. And the other thing that's really bad about the students today is that they get out with so much debt. The debt is strangling these dental students. So they're not able in many instances to just go out, maybe do a residency for a year or two, and then start their own practice. I mean, that used to be the SOP, but today it's rare that a young dentist can do that if they're going to be in the urban areas. Now, they're still, uh, I'm in Texas, we're in Texas, and uh, a lot of the students fan out through Texas in a lot of the small towns, and there's still a lot of opportunities there. But let's face it. I mean, most dentists today want to practice in urban areas. Yeah, the millennials do. They they want to practice in urban. And um, but back back to your site. So you have a website, realityratings.com, and this site not only features all the unbiased product evaluation you have come to rely on when choosing products for your practice, but includes many of the items you have been asking for, such as customized product comparison grids, enhanced product images and videos, and for the very first time, never submitted member submitted reviews. Well, um, so, you know, Google reviews are big. Um, what's the other one they always talk about? Um, Yelp. Yelp. Even though I've never seen a live human being ever use Yelp. I, I hear it's a thing. Um, but, um, I always test everything in my own world. Like, but, um, my, my old dog friends that I drink and watch football games with, I mean, we, we've been reading your reality catalog, forever um it has helped me so much through the uh the cosmetic revolution um and then we went into the digital revolution you know so i've lived through the cosmetic revolution and then i went through the digital revolution now i think we're going through the dso revolution which i don't think is a revolution i think the dso thing's a joke because um um that number one you and i remember you're an orthodontist you remember orthodontic centers of america where lazarus I uh, got a big line of credit, bought a bunch of old uh, orthodontists out. Uh, when they retired, replaced them with new graduates. Was the only one that made it to the New York Stock Exchange. The whole thing ran into the ground and delisted because they were buying out old dogs like us three and replaced them with some punk-ass kid that just came out of school. Experience. and Who has no skin in the game. And um, dentistry, is a, it's, it's a very hard job. And when you go to a seminar... Um, the associate dentist sits there the whole time on Snapchat, and the owner dentist is sitting up taking notes. And the um, the so you either have a skin in the game or you don't. Uh, Chick Fil A, you own your own store. You only get one store. Um, you have to be married with a kid. You have to be married with a kid because they want you born in this city starving hungry you're only going to get one this isn't some subway game where you can have 12 of them and not manage any of them this is freaking chick-fil-a which i never saw would come out of nowhere and double mcdonald's i mean i remember when wendy's overtook burger king in my whole life i'm like wow wendy's was always third place and they only got to second place for an hour and then they were back to third because chick-fil-a so so Nobody, um, there's not one DSO that could go public. And I'm really excited about this next contraction because um, no one can predict the future. I can't tell you. If I told you what Ingrid's going to buy you for Christmas, you'd, we'd all know that's crazy. Um, nobody, anybody who tells you where the stock market's going to go is insane. But I don't know what Ingrid's going to get you for Christmas, but I bet she gets you something for Christmas and your next birthday. 
there will be another economic contraction. There always are. I mean, I mean, um, I lived through 80, 87, the Y2K, um, 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 Lehman Brothers. And right now, your healthiest DSOs, if you log on to Wall Street, like Heartland, they consider that debt junk. So this next contraction, all these highly leveraged DSOs that are already sitting on junk under these conditions, it's going to wipe out half of them. All the high leverage, and what they're all going to come back to and learn is that um, when you're an employee with no skin in the game, you're not going to try that molar endo. You're not going to log on to realityratings.com no. and pay no. 99 bucks to make sure. Because the reason I want to make sure it's a lot, let me tell you what my stung in the lights are. When I got out of school, the smartest guys in cosmetic dentistry were saying, oh, yeah, she's pretty like Ingrid. Just do Dicor crowns and cement them with Duralon. Guess how many I had to cut off and redo for free? And then you were talking about the coefficient thermal expansion. Uh, remember our glass? Of course. I don't know what Targus Vectris means, but I know Targus and Vectris hated each other. Um, they um, they got divorced the minute you cemented it in their mouth. And when you have skin in the game, when you work for Aspen or Heartland, you don't give a shit. But when you are an owner operator yes. and I've had the same location for 30 years, guess how many art glass, Dicor, and Targus Vectors I cut off and redid for free? You know what the answer is? All of them. Every freaking one of them. Actually, Vectris wasn't too bad. Targus, <laughs> it was the Targus? It was the Targus. So, yeah. so the bottom line is <laughs> when, 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 you, when you tell me that like, like the big news today is that Walmart's opening up um, a dental in office of dental. Walgreens too. Yeah. Well, is that the first time Walmart's ever tried yeah. to open up a dental office? Is 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 this is this? Well, new? they had it in Sears. Is this? Yeah, <laughs> Sears. But, I mean, but, guys, but we know what happened to Sears. Guys, the greatest thing about being old, yeah. Uh, besides high blood sugar, <laughs> uh, I probably have a lump somewhere that needs to examine is that I've seen every rodeo at least twice and it's going to be through time and nobody's going to go public having a bunch of employee dentists who don't even give a shit if the product doesn't work. You have to be an owner operator in a small town to go to realityratings.com because you start using a product that doesn't work and your kids are going to school with them and you sit next to them at church. Guess where they're going to come back? And, and you know who invented the warranty? It was, it was Sam Walton. And you know what his autobiography was called? It was called Made in America. Mm -hmm. And everything was made in America. And you know why he invented the warranty? Because they were they started in um in um in um some small town in Arkansas. What was it called? Uh, uh Bentonville. Bentonville, Arkansas. My dad used to take me there. He said he, my dad told me, and I quote, you know, the Muslims always try to get back to Mecca. We're capitalists. We're gonna drive, we're gonna go to Bentonville, <laughs> go to Arkansas. Bentonville. <laughs> see the the, the yes. mecca of capitalism and go trout fishing and we did and um and and nobody had warranties at the time sears gibson's tg i no one did and some lady like ingrid bought a pair of shoes the heel busted off and the lady walked up to helen or, or um mrs um walmart yeah it was sam walton and helen walton handed her the shoe back said i bought this husband from your husband a week ago look at the heel and I went to take it back. He said they don't do refunds. No one does refunds. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll never buy anything from your store again. So what Helen did, she came home. You're taking the store back. And he said, well, I didn't make it. So he immediately worked back from there. And then next time the guy came to sell him 10 shoes, he goes, yeah, give me 10, but give me this one. So he pushed quality up the supply chain. And he said, and, and, and I don't see any, you have to be an owner to think like that. And when I go in and I see associate dentist, uh, they don't want to try to take out the tooth. They don't want to try to do the molar endo. They sure as hell aren't going to care if the product lasts or not. If the product fails, they're not going to have to rework it. But if you show me a business model that scaled out and took over Wall Street where nobody had any skin in the game, please email me at Howard at dentaltown.com. I'd like to freaking know what Disney movie you just watched while eating edibles because it doesn't exist. But I got to tell you something. This goes beyond dentistry, though. I'm sure you know this. You know, one of our neighbors is a is a vet, and he told me that his associate just left, and he said he wasn't worth a damn anyway. You know, the owner of, of he owns the, the, the vet owns his practice. He had an associate working for him. Sound familiar? And 
And just the other day in, in the dental school, we had a, a ER doc uh, who was the husband of one of our dental students. And this ER doc works for several different hospitals and for some of these emergency centers. And he's an employee. Um, he didn't even know um, who Red Duke was. Now, Red Duke is a legend in emergency medicine in Houston, up there with Cooley and DeBakey. DeBakey. Uh, Red Duke was, he was a character. He just died. And so I mentioned Red Duke to this young physician. He didn't have the faintest idea who he was. And so it's not just dentists. It's not just dentistry. It's medicine. It's veterinary medicine. And the lawyers are even worse. You know, let's face it. That's, they're the worst of all. So, so I think it's um, somehow um, you have to have, and you, you hit the nail on the head, you have to have skin in the game. And if you don't have skin in the game, it's game over. So you're talking about Michael DeBakey. Yes. <laughs> and um, Michael DeBakey, I went to Creighton um, University with his, uh, gosh, was it his son or his grandson? I think it might have been his grandson. Is there a dentist out there now in Houston, uh, DeBakey? Um, I don't think so, but Cooley, so cool, Denton Cooley was DeBakey's big rival. They were both heart surgeons. Uh, they worked in competing hospitals. And so, um, uh, so and, and actually the Cooley family are the ones that developed Copolite. I'm sure you remember Copolite. So... So it's uh, there's there's some pretty uh, pretty old names in um, in the Houston medical community. So so just to summarize, we went way over an hour. Um, so reality, it's um, it's mostly restorative adhesive dentistry. I mean, is it dental equipment? Is it is it X-ray machines? Give it give it a succinct deal. What it is. So we have about a hundred and fifteen categories of products. Uh, we uh, right now we don't have any 115 categories of products. Yes. Okay. So um, we have almost 1300 products evaluated on our site. Uh, and so it, from an equipment standpoint, I mean, we have hand pieces. Like I said, we have curing lights. We have uh, digital sensors. We have intral cameras. Um, uh, we Is have sandblasters, bleaching, yeah, like you said, bleaching equipment. Um, we have a lot of different materials. Polishers for porcelain and composite. So there's, there's a, there's, it, it runs the gamut. But the reason we changed the site from Reality Aesthetics, which, it, what it, which is what it was, to Reality Ratings and Reviews, is because we are expanding our purview. And that's why we have opened up the reviews. So the reviews that come in from members um, are all vetted by me. Uh, so it's not like they're posting something on, um, what's the most popular one out there? Uh, the, uh, Yelp. 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 Yeah. So it's not like they post something on Yelp and nobody puts any eyeballs on it. So we do have rules on what they can post on our site. Um, but if it's good information, um, we want to, we want it, uh, we want our members to have it. So, so it's, um, it's basically what it is. It's, it's social com, um, confirmation. They, they know that when the sales rep comes in the office and gets you by yourself, that it, it can be predatory. You don't, you don't, you know, it's not transparent. You know, like, like, like people will tell me that and I'll be at a, at a convention and I'll open up dental town. I'll say, man, that is awesome. Um, will you post that right here and I'll open up the deal. I'm sitting here with so-and-so, uh, go ahead and tell me and post what you, no, 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 no. So they know a lion when they're going to eat you, they try to separate you from the herd. Yes. And then they, they kill you. And so it, it's called transparency and the same people um, whenever governments don't get transparent, ask Poland what happened when they didn't know what, what Germany was up to, you know? Um, so you want transparency because when you're transparent, um, you do things 
uh, in the bathroom, you wouldn't do at the kitchen table. You know, I mean, there's just, uh, there's just difference there. And so you want transparency. So they want social confirmation. Um, and I also think that's why dental town, um, we were four years ahead of Facebook and everybody said, Oh, Facebook's going to kill you. Dental town has still grown a thousand members a month since they launched Facebook. We're just kind of up to 250,000. And one of the big deals is that you can still be anonymous. I mean, on Facebook, they don't want to, it, it, first of all, in Facebook, if I say, hey, your product sucks, well, you're just going to delete me from the group and ban me. Well, you can't do that on Dental Town, but, but a lot of people don't want the conflict. To, they don't want to say, my name is George Smith. I'm a dentist here on this city, and I bought this product, and it was a nightmare, and it sucked. And, you know, so, so we, no one's anonymous to me. We know who you are when you register on Dental Town, and we ping your email address every month. <laughs> so as soon as your email goes dark, you can't post on Dental Town anymore. And so I think that um, um, you practice by yourself. That was the whole deal of Dental Town. With DentalTown.com, no one will ever have to practice solo again. And if you're an owner operator and you own your own business, you'll be around for 30 years because America is only 5% of the population. They spent 108 billion last year fixing their teeth. The planet has 8 billion people, 2 million dentists who spent half a trillion dollars in their mouth. So Danaher wants to get out of the dental business because they don't see a market there. Really? I mean, are you completely free? I'm so glad Dana Hurst spent him off because I would hate living. Uh, I Could you imagine being a child and you know your parents don't love you? Uh, that, that would just be so uh, devastating. I'm glad. Um, uh, so only the owner operators are going to join. If, if you want to get the dental associates to join this, you need to go talk to... Um, um, Har um, Rick Workman of Heartland, Stephen Thorne of Aspen and saying, can you get a group membership? Have, have you talked to them about that? I so contact a few of them because I lecture sometimes for Invisalign and I go to those groups. And one of the problem is like you were saying, they want to use some of the products, but the doctor said, we don't use, we don't allow to order the products. It's management who order the products and we use that. But yes, we mentioned it to them. They, I, I contacted them via email and asked them, we'll be happy to help you. So educate your dentist and learn it because i know i know the only owner operator at heartland dental is rick workman and he doesn't want to pay for all this i mean he doesn't want to um these disasters that you talked about with bonding agents and and things like that i mean god if i in fact you know what i always thought i always thought delta dental i always thought you know delta dental they pay for what, what percent of dentistry do you think they pay for in america delta yeah a lot I mean, what, do you, what do you think it is i'd say 40 percent um well, yeah, it, it, I mean, it, maybe they're they're maybe they pay twenty percent, but the other twenty percent of revenue is people coming in paying their co payments and the, the the rest of it. But it, it's a huge amount. Yeah. I always thought, my God, why don't they? Uh, they should uh, make Dental Town online CE for free because when this dentistry goes bad, and that that's where I want to I, I want to answer this question. Um, so when you and I were little and we all three got out of school, there was no internet, there was no AOL dial up. Um, and to me, going back in my childhood, the, the first neatest technology that they ever came out with was the remote control because um, when we were little, and your dad wouldn't change the channel, he said, change it to three, and then to eight, 12. And then, and then the reception didn't come in, you had to stand there because for some reason- Well, the you, antenna, remember the- well, No, when you just held the antenna, it worked. I don't know what my body was doing with the with the electromagnetic waves, but and then the next cool thing was the uh, automatic garage door opener because every time you pull up to the house, you know you had to jump out of the car and go lift up this four million pound wooden door in the rain. Yeah, yeah. I never saw any of this happen, but we're about. Um, you know, I always thought it was a disservice that you know I would do a filling, but. Dentrix, Eaglesoft, Open Dental, they don't ask you, well, what material was it? What bonding agent was it? What, what, what's going on here? I mean, it was, it's basically all of our records were just about who owes who much, much money. And I thought, well, why aren't they freaking asking what material? But now <clears throat> we're around the corner. The internet was the last big thing. That was 94 to 2000. So we're getting ready to have an Another huge correction, tragedy. read business cycles. Joseph Schumer is one of my favorite economists. He got a Nobel Prize in economics uh, on business cycles. Business cycles happen because look who's making all the decisions. Crazy monkeys. 
and humans are more wild animal than they are humans made with these whatever. I mean, they're, they're wild freaking animals and crazy animals do crazy things. And that's why you have a recession every 10 years to clean out all the malfeasant um, um, decision making. But the next revolution up, the next big thing is artificial intelligence. And it's going to be programmed with um, Python. It's, gonna, it's about cloud computing, big data, machine learning algorithms. And we're going to get close to where Delta is finally going to pull their head out of their butt and they're finally going to sit there and say, well, you know, um, if I have an endodontist do this molar root canal in 60 months, 5% are extracted. If I have a general dentist do it, it's 10%. But if I have Ingrid do that root canal, she's an orthodontist, 20% of her molar root canals are extracted in five years. And I think they're going to, I think that's the next wave where they're going to sit there and say, Howard, um, you're a nice guy, you're a nice dentist, and your patients love you, but we're not paying for any root canals or implants with you because it's not a return on investment. And then it'll go a step farther and saying, well, what composite are you putting in there? No, we're not gonna use the Targus Vectors, Art Glass, Ibon. Do you, do you think that's the next thing? Is, is third party payers like Medicaid, Medicare, Delta saying, we ain't paying for that. Well, they're already doing that with, with drugs. I mean, they tell you which drugs you can get. So if, you're, if your physician writes you a prescription for a certain uh, medication and the insurance doesn't think that they think that, well, that's too expensive or that's really, uh, there's, a, there's a, another medication that is just as good, but it costs a whole lot less, even if there's no proof of that, but they think it's, the, the problem with institutional uh, medicine, healthcare, and it's even going to get worse under Medicare for all, which I'm not a proponent of. Uh, but, uh, but the fact is, is that th this is the way things are going. So even if we hold it off for a while, I do think that maybe sometime in the next 20 or 30 years, yes, there is going to be a dictation or the government entities or insurance entities, which could be one and the same, are going to dictate what you can use and what you can't use. And I mean, it's, I, I agree with you 100%. AI is gonna change everything. And the way that all these companies are going to sell products are gonna change everything. But let me just say one thing about, I, I wanted to get in about this digital revolution. So um, this, you know, everyone is talking now about intraoral scanners. You know, we're gonna scan preps instead of putting in the goopy stuff. But the problem with this, and I gave a lecture at NYU a number of years ago about high tech stuff. And I said, well, don't even think about using high tech stuff if you can't do a basic prep, okay? But even worse is that scanners mean that you're going to be cutting teeth down. And now you have this trend, uh, like I said, minimally invasive dentistry, which really isn't new, but it is the, stand it is the, uh, the um, standard of care around the world using things like SDF, for instance, which was kept out of the US for how many years by the FDA when it was used in Asia for 30 years. I mean, figure that one out. So I think that all these, uh, there's, there's going to be a convergence of technologies here and not all that is going to be bad. So, not cutting down teeth and trying to put, say, SDF and a sealant on a tooth, even if it has an active <coughs> carious lesion, may not be bad treatment. It may actually be optimal treatment for many people around the world because it's going to save a lot of misery. And But the people who make these scanners, they don't want to hear that. So... I'm not anti-digital, but I do think that this whole trend towards 
uh, it's let's face it. I mean, it's a it's a way of furthering your practice. And listen, we've been capitalists. I mean, I still have my practice. I mean, I still practice two days a week. Um, so I'm not I'm not against making money, but I am against uh, the this a lot of the concepts that are coming out where we are being too aggressive. And so I wanted to get that in before we. Uh, okay, before last we... question to goes to Ingrid, who is a orthodontist. Um, last question: What what did you think of the Smiles Drug Club going? Oh, I'm not sure about it. And especially there have been a lot of problems because sometimes it's not controlled by dentists or orthodontists. So I think there's some issues on that. They have to be controlled. And another thing I want to say is on reality, we also give a complimentary membership to students, dental students, because we want to help them. We know, like he was saying, they owe a lot of money at loans. And, and then all the all question that. everybody's asking is on that name reality, did you steal that from Albert Einstein? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I heard that no. word first from Albert. No, no, he stole Albert it from had Albert. Nothing, yeah, he had nothing to do with it. We were just sitting around one day, and everyone always talks about, well, the reality of the situation is, and this was in 1983, so before all reality TV and all this sort of thing, so anyway. Hey, it was uh, just a huge honor for you guys to come on the show today. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you for having for us. Howard, this is great. We loved it. Mm -hmm.